It's longer time. Yay! Yay. Lager Time Poems, Stories and Thoughts By me, Paul Cree Who else? Greetings, bonjour, what's happening? Welcome to Lager Time My name is Paul Cree This here is my blog Podcast thing Where I share bits of stuff That I've been working on be it poems or stories or thoughts or music, whatever. So, I thought I'd write a thing, being that on Thursday the 24th, I'm doing an event which is celebrating 10 years of Beats and Elements at Camden People's Theatre in London. Beats and Elements is the theatre company I co-set up back with my good pal, Conrad Murray. We've made shows that tend to look at issues of social class in Britain and use rap, beatbox, live looping and spoken word to tell those stories, as well as drama and occasionally a bit of movement, though I struggle with the last one. Hopefully, by writing this, it will highlight the importance of genuine investment in theatre makers and artists, the type of which we were fortunate enough to get. When I say investment... I'm talking about space, time and opportunities to try things out in front of audiences. Getting programmed into theatres and yes, money, dough, spondulies, readies, paper. But the bits before money are, I'd say, a lot more important, especially in the early stages of trying to create something. Despite the 10-year tagline, we actually started Beats and Elements back in 2013. Our first show was in 2015, and that was No Milk for the Foxes. The timelines aren't quite exact, but by the time that show first went up, we'd already done a number of performances and events at Camden People's Theatre, as well as Battersea Arts Centre and the Broccoli Jack, as part of that show's development including performing at CPT's 20th and 25th anniversaries. Our 10-year bash coincides with their 30th anniversary and also my 5th wedding anniversary, a triple celebration no less. CPT supported us from the off. They gave us that much-needed space and time to develop that show and subsequent shows and projects. And crucially, They didn't ask too many questions about what we were trying to make. They trusted us to get on with it. As that first show progressed, they then supported us to get funding for it and run workshop programs in their local community, which is something we wanted to do. When you're trying to make theatre, especially in a city like London, space and time is what you need, as well as money, but that comes much later. From what I can tell, this kind of support is very difficult to get now. It was difficult back then, hence we were fortunate, but now I don't know what younger theatre companies do. Venues and organisations seem much more risk-averse, especially with something that might seem a bit controversial or go against the grain of perceived wisdom. We had things we wanted to say and ways of saying them that probably wouldn't get past the sensitivity complex these days. Like I said, they just let us get on with it, even if they may not have always agreed with what we were saying. They let us breathe and find our feet. When we first set out, me and Con sat down at Foyles on Charing Cross Road. We wrote down what we wanted to do, 
run workshops in schools and local communities and make shows based on the kind of people we both knew. The kinds of people that we weren't seeing on stage or screen. But this had to be done using our own vernacular, our own lexicon, language, clothes, caps, rap, beats, banter. We wanted to show the characters as three-dimensional, light and shade, good, bad and everything in between. How it should be. Too many times we'd seen things which portrayed working class people as either evil or saintly, nothing in between. Also, despite London having a rich history of theatre with more theatres than it knows what to do with, it seemed rare to see shows that featured working class Londoners in it or even lower middle class Londoners, let alone shows written and created by them. This problem persists. In some ways it has improved just so long as you're singing from the same hymn sheet as the gatekeepers and funders then you might get a shot never had them brand new clothes never had that holiday abroad always had that full stripe adidas got abused by the kids at school never had them brand new clothes never had that holiday abroad always had that full stripe adidas got abused by the kids at school why letters don't come through the letterbox telling me to apply for credit when my dad said don't get it if it ain't in your pocket then you ain't got it but I wanted them brand new clothes And I wanted that holiday abroad I wanted that three stripe Adidas I never had it so I wanted it all White letters turned into red letters That chase is calling my phone I buried my head in the sand Just wished that I listened to my folks Gemma came along and I was in a mess She helped me sort out my life To be down to sit as a device And help me get my head right There'd been similar wrist shows before us Of course but to me, the ones I saw were either from or for a very middle-class perspective and audience. I'd say that's still true now, maybe more so. Whether it's crowbarring in some message about the environment or referencing whatever social justice issue is relevant at the time, or just middle-class people writing shows about the working classes, but done badly. For the record, neither of us have an issue with people writing about people from different backgrounds. We just like to see it done well. Though Conrad and I are from different backgrounds, him being from South London and growing up on council estates and me being from Hawley and Surrey and a lower middle class family, we felt we had a lot in common and shared similar views on many things. We also both rapped and had a background in music. We both had to experience the difficulties and pressures of just trying to keep your head above the water whilst doing mind-numbing, low-paying jobs having seen our parents do similar things. I've never shied away from my background. Sometimes I've noticed people cock their eyebrows a bit when I talk about where I grew up and the environment around me, especially with the types of noises that Foxes was making. As if I'm not supposed to be saying what I'm saying. I'm fully aware of what I had and what I didn't have growing up. I had two loving and supportive parents in a fairly leafy area. However, the smaller material realities were somewhat different to how they're sometimes perceived. The situation that the characters Mark and Sparks find themselves in, skint and trying to pay bills, has been a constant for me my whole life. Con was probably the first person I met who read a lot of books, bar my own parents. I didn't know many people that read books and was quite embarrassed about my own little reading habit. I kept it hidden. My parents always encouraged me and my siblings to read books and question things. Those traits probably set me apart from some of my more working class friends. Truth is, I never felt like I was either working class nor middle class. Hence, I used the term lower middle. Not that it should matter all that much. But when you're in a consciously or even unconsciously class-obsessed society like England, I guess it does. The issue of class was always something that interested me, as it did with Comrade. we talk a lot, lend each other books and share articles to read. Owen Jones's first Chavs book was one we both read. Class was an issue that seemed to have been brushed under the carpet. If it wasn't David Cameron pronouncing that we're all middle class now, then the issue itself was probably buried under the rising tide of the various social justice theories that have become prevalent in the arts. These mainly focused on race, sex and gender. 
class barely got a mention. Perhaps it was too difficult to define as all the social justice stuff always had a very clear target for who to blame. Little of this reflected what we were seeing and experiencing around us. Class affects everyone. Maybe that's the problem. London had become ridiculously expensive to live in. Scores of young people had gone to university, got themselves into huge amounts of debt on the promise of lucrative, highly skilled careers that for the most part didn't seem to exist. Or if they did, they were going to the usual suspects who went to the right schools and universities, etc. The jobs available to them relative to the cost of living were poorly paid. Meanwhile, those at the lower end of the jobs market had to contend with zero-hours contracts doing jobs that at one time would have offered security and enough money to live on. To date, whilst those living costs have continued to rise, the wages haven't. The opportunities to move into careers like ours, in the arts, became less and less for people from working class backgrounds or even lower middle class backgrounds like mine. The pool of people the arts and media world seemed to be drawing from became increasingly narrow. Therefore, the type of work being created more homogenised, too similar, too safe, didn't feel it. It was frustrating to see. All of the above was the background to us starting to make some stuff together. So while both working at Battersea Arts Centre, we by chance bumped into Brian Logan one night, who directed the first show I was ever in at BAC when I was doing the youth theatre there. He asked what we were up to. We told him about the little piece we were working on. He then told us he'd just taken over as artistic director at Camden People's Theatre and invited us up there for a chat. We went up to Euston, sat down with Brian and told him about the company we were trying to get going. We also showed him a video of a 15-minute excerpt of this piece we'd performed at one of Battersea Arts Centre's legendary scratch nights, which they sadly no longer do. He seemed really interested and quite quickly gave us some of that crucial space and time to develop it, as well as the chance to perform a short 15-minute section at an event that he was programming. We repeated this process a few times, each time showing another section that we'd made in front of an audience until we had a solid hour's worth of raw material. We performed that one hour. It went really well and afterwards CPT sat us down and offered us a full three-week run the following year with development time, as well as the support to get the funding to finish it and put it on. This would pay for a producer, two dramaturgs, lighting, set designer, marketing, props and costume. They also sourced funding for us to run a bunch of workshops at local community centres, all of which led to CPT setting up a youth theatre which still exists to this day. At the time, out of necessity, both Conrad and I had gone back to having day jobs in schools, so we had to do all of this on top of doing our day jobs. But we did it, and it was worth it. She always leaves a third of her tea in the mug I only eat half of a biscuit We both like sci-fi films And both think he's the end of this shit We don't spend much time together I work nights and she works days But those few minutes in the day that we get Are always worth the wait I don't want them brand new clothes Don't need that holiday abroad I'm fine with four stripe adidas Just want to spend time with them all Don't want them brand new clothes Don't need that holiday abroad I'm fine with four stripe adidas Just want to spend time with them all I guess we were the lucky recipients of two of those infamous phrases. Right place, right time. And it's not what you know, it's who you know. As lucky as we were, we'd grafted to put our first ideas together. For the original scratch at BAC, we'd applied under the name of Beats and Elements, not our own individual names. We were both known in that building, especially Con, who's done stuff there for years. We had relationships with the producers, but we wanted the work to stand on its own. They didn't know it was us. By the time the show first went up, in 2015, it had been over two years of making it before we'd seen any dough, bar a couple of small performance fees CPT gave us for those early events. We just made the thing and hoped that if it was any good, then the money would come. And if it didn't, we would just do it anyway. 
For a small venue, CPT went above and beyond with what they did for that show. Alongside the PR people, they secured us a whole bunch of reviews and coverage that I don't think we would have got anywhere else. We did interviews with The Guardian and The Candom Journal and got featured on a podcast. All the ingredients were there for us to go in and do our job. The perfect setup for a goal. We just had to stick the ball in the net. The show was successful and we seemed to generate a genuine buzz. By the last week of the run, we had no idea who was coming in. When you're at this level, you're mostly relying on friends and family to buy tickets. But we went beyond that. We brought a lot of people into that theatre for the first time. People that wouldn't normally watch theatre, as well as attracting groups of academics, students and journalists. CPT let us program our own post-show performances where we had beatbox battles, rap freestyles, spoken word artists and performers all sharing the stage with us. The one thing we never got to do with Foxes was tour it. CPT were already at capacity just managing us and all the other shows and artists that they program. Our producer, Lara Taylor, got a full-time producer job and neither me or Con had the knowledge or wherewithal in my case, to try and make it happen. So that's where the show stayed. Thank God we had it filmed though. Though getting that back and uploaded took over five years and it's another story altogether. We got it all. We're sacking it up. We want more, more, more. We got it all in. Yeah, we're all working hard so I guess we can all win. We got it all. We're sacking it up. We want more, more, more. We got it all in And you were all working hard So I guess we can all win Even on the morning I feel great Had to tell myself Not enough on my plate You can do better Not long after the Foxes show Kong got me to read J.G. Ballard's High Rise We got talking again Got to throwing ideas around Which led to the next show High Rise is state of mind We both wanted to bring in Some other collaborators for this one David Bonnick Jr. A.K.A. rapper Gambit Ace And Lakeisha Lynch-Stevens had performed at our Foxes post-show events and smashed it. They had ideas and skills. Gambit and Comrade go back years in both theatre and music with TDC and Rhodium. We'd met Lakeisha doing stuff at BAC. They got what we were trying to do. We got to working and repeated that making process all over again, grinding out material, doing little scratches here and there. CPT came on board as a producer alongside BAC and GO4 in Gloucester with Sarah Blowers as producer. We assembled a great team, bringing back Simeon Miller as lighting designer from the Foxes show who made this nuts Kanye S lighting design, all courtesy of another funding grant from the Arts Council. Like Foxes, the money didn't come till much later in the process. There was two or three years of no dough just grafting. But what we did get was that crucial space and time again. A room here and a room there, a speaker here and a PA there, so we could jam, talk and make stuff with a couple of scratch performances along the way to build up the momentum. It seems like being one Because the madness has begun Let's have some fun We swallow their lies High Rise went up in 2018 and again we had a really good reception with some great coverage. We went on London Live TV and BBC London promoting the show as well as countless reviews. This time around we were able to do a small tour which included runs at Battersea Arts Centre, Candle People's Theatre, then nights in GL4, Matson, Gloucester, Home Slough, Fairfield Halls, Croydon, Home Manchester and then the Southbank Centre London. In between all of that, Covid happened. 
which turned the industry on its head. Things haven't quite been the same since, but I'm glad we did get those shows in. Because the madness has begun Let's have some fun We swallow their lies Yeah, we meet in all the flies Perhaps we'll die Once virtuous, now standing on the verges Trying to test who can fall the furthest There's been surges in the circus The animals have been let loose and taken over the circus Dogs in the burgers, blood in the pool Shut down the centres and shut down the school Climbing the walls, people packing tools Hunting in packs like bloodthirsty wolves They want resources, they want power They want a saviour, come off the hour They will devour the tower and then cower When it all comes crumbling Tumbling down in the shower, yeah, above it all On a pedestal, watching it all Untouchable and unreachable Unseen like a dream, unspeakable Like the true power on top of this cathedral It seems like they won Because the man is... In hindsight, both of those shows could have had a longer life People still ask us about them now Getting to perform parts of them again at CPT Will hopefully breathe new life into them or at least remind people about what we created. Those problems I mentioned at the start in terms of trying to make shows are still as prominent as ever. I sometimes wonder, if we were starting out now, would we get anything off the ground? It's tough times indeed. But if you're able to get the investment the way we did, then some good things can be created with a legacy. But in answer to my own question, We probably would have made something, but nowhere near to the level of what we did. We never relied on funding, but it certainly helps when you get it. In 2022, those shows plus Conrad's Denmark were published by Matthew and Drama in Beats and Elements, a hip-hop theatre trilogy, and live on in the scripts. We know of at least one university who apparently now has us on their reading list, and we've been cited in a few essays, which is nuts to me. We started this in Comrade's studio in Mitcham, just two geezers jamming some ideas around and we got lucky enough to have an organisation like CPT come and invest some time, space and eventually money in us. And we created something which lives on. Large up the risk takers, large up the space givers, large up the dough providers, large up Battersea Arts Centre, GL4, Striker Light, Polka Theatre and anyone else that supported us along the way especially large up Camden People's Theatre. Thanks for everything, and happy birthday. And happy birthday to us. It's longer time. Yay! Yay! Longer time. Poems, stories and thoughts. By me, Paul Cree. Who else?